Here it is, the granddaddy of them all, the mega code. And in this mega code scenario, a combined knowledge of procedures and treatments from all of the ACLS algorithms will be necessary. In our scenario, you'll be the ACLS team leader with a 45-year-old male patient who appears to be unresponsive. A witness states that the person had a choking emergency where an object was removed. The patient was brought to advanced medical care because he was having a difficult time breathing afterwards. As you begin to talk to the patient, he stops responding to all questions. Remember to use basic life support before we go to advanced life support. The patient should be checked for unresponsiveness. If unresponsive, a code should be called. Then you would check for a pulse and breathing. In our scenario, the patient is in respiratory arrest. A basic airway like an OPA or an NPA should be inserted. Then we're going to start rescue breathing with a bag valve mask at 15 liters of oxygen. We're going to deliver that at one breath every five seconds. Vitals should be taken and an ECG monitor would be attached. The rhythm on the ECG is a normal sinus with PVCs or preventricular contractions at 78 beats per minute, but it's irregular. Knowing that a rhythm with multiple and frequent PVCs could deteriorate quickly, we start an IV in order to administer IV saline and or drugs. After a little time, the monitor is no longer detecting a pulse, and on the monitor it looks like ventricular fibrillation. We check for a pulse physically to find that the patient has no pulse. It's now time to start CPR with cycles of 30 compressions to two breaths. The defib pads are applied while CPR is in progress. And when the pads are in place, the leader will tell everyone to stand clear while the rhythm is analyzed. V-fib is still present on the ECG. And with a monophasic defibrillator, we're going to go ahead and charge to 360 joules to shock our patient. A quick look at the monitor shows that the patient is still in V-fib and CPR is continued. Since we have V-fib, the first shock has been given and an IV is established, it's now time to go with our first medication, epinephrine. One milligram of one to 10,000 while CPR is still in progress. This helps to circulate the medication throughout the body and especially get it to the heart. Remember that CPR is not stopped when drugs are administered. Now after two minutes of CPR, it's important that the compressor switches with the defibrillator. This helps to make sure that we have a fresh compressor who will be able to give us consistent compressions at a rate between 100 and 120 times per minute at the appropriate depth. Before resuming CPR, a look at the monitor though reveals persistent V-fib. Another shock with a monophasic defibrillator is given at 360 joules. This time when the monitor is checked and our sinus rhythm is evident, a pulse should be checked to make sure that we have a perfusing rhythm. In our scenario, the patient has a pulse, but he's still not breathing. Breath should continue at one breath every five seconds. The leader needs to call for a set of vitals to determine the next treatment. We find a blood pressure of 88 systolic when we have achieved ROSC, which means return of spontaneous circulation after cardiac arrest. A systolic blood pressure below 90 requires a one to two liter bolus of normal saline to get the blood pressure up. Since our patient is still in respiratory arrest, we need to get an ET tube in place and monitor capnography. With capnography, we can verify tube placement when a persistent capnographic waveform is present at 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury. Capnography measures the concentration of carbon dioxide in the exhaled air at the end of the expiration. The CO2 that is detected by capnography in exhaled air is produced in the body and delivered to the lungs by circulating blood. This is why it's so helpful for us to know when compressions are being done well by producing circulation through the body that gets that CO2 out to the lungs to be exhaled. That gives us a chance to know that our CPR is being quite effective or when the body is actually starting to biologically come to and we see that exchange of gases of oxygen and CO2. Our megacode scenario will end with getting a 12 lead ECG, another set of vitals and considering why this patient went into cardiac arrest so that this patient's life can be saved by correcting those underlying problems.